Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about Saturn and its transit into the sign of Aquarius. Now this transit has very recently happened. It has already begun. It happened on the 29th of April early in the morning when Saturn entered its Moltricon sign of Aquarius. There's a bit of a delay in terms of making this video, but that's what Saturn is known for. It is the Karaka for delays as well, uh, besides being a Karaka for the Karmas. Okay, so um, we will go through some interesting insights uh, into this video. Uh, you might have already come across, uh, you know, a lot of uh, videos with regards to, uh, you know, predictions being made for different ascendants. But what I'm not going to share with you is that Saturn is going to be staying for a very brief period in its Moltricon uh, Rashi before it goes retrograde and moves back to the sign of Capricorn. Okay, so let's understand the key dates first. So 29th of April 2022, Saturn has already entered into the sign of Aquarius, which is its Moltricon sign. It is going to stay there till 11th of July. And on 12th of July, Saturn is going to move back into the sign of Capricorn. Now, while it is uh, direct in direct motion at present, okay, uh, and that is still about 5th of June. On 5th of June, at about 1 degrees, 1.05 uh, degrees, okay, um, Saturn is going to go retrograde on 5th of June. And just a day before that, it is going to be stationary, uh, extremely special, extremely powerful for some time uh, into the sign of Aquarius before it moves back to uh, Capricorn. And uh, Saturn is going to go direct in Capricorn on 23rd of October 2022. And finally, it will move into the sign of Aquarius. That will be the final movement, a long lasting uh, movement, which will go on for about two and a half years is going to happen on 17th of January, 2023. So this is a very brief appearance. It's a guest appearance in terms of, uh, you know, the sign of Aquarius for Saturn. Let me tell you one, one deep secret that here, Saturn is going to be in the nakshatra of Dhanishta, Pada 3. And it is going to remain in the same pada for the you know entire uh, time uh, while it is uh, in the sign of Aquarius, okay, till it goes retrograde as well. So from you know April through uh, the second week of July, it is going to be in the same nakshatra, same uh, pada there, okay, um, and it's going to be extremely slow as well at the same time, okay. Uh, in Navamsha it is going to be in the sign of Libra. Saturn will not deliver any kind of result or a big change till it changes its Navamsha sign, okay? So only, you know, sometime in, in July, uh, you know, after 12th of July, when it goes retrograde back into the sign of Capricorn, that's when it changes from Pada 3 to Pada 2, um, and that's how it is going to start delivering results. So most prominent results are still going to be for the sign of Capricorn with an extra special, extra powerful Saturn. Yes, for this point in time, Saturn is going to be in a great dignity. Just imagine a Graha that is in its own sign in the Rashi chart, in the D1 chart, and in its exaltation sign in the Navamsha chart. And when it goes retrograde, it is going to gain Cheshtabala. It is going to be appearing more closer to the earth. It is going to have high amount of energies and it is going to have a great strength for the next two, two and a half months. So uh, it's, a, it's an extremely karmic time. It's an extremely uh, great time. There are a lot of positives. Uh, there are, of course, some minuses and, and you know pitfalls and blind spots as well. But all in all, it is a, a very positive time because uh, Saturn is going to be extremely powerful. Now, how it will have an impact on your chart, on your horoscope, or your ascendant, and how it's going to impact your life. If at present you are undergoing a Mahadasha or an Antadasha or a Pratantadasha that is associated to either Saturn or Mars or Jupiter, then this 
transit is going to have some sort of an impact uh, on yourself okay reason being because saturn is in its own sign uh, and then it's multicron sign going pretty strong it is in the nakshatra of mangala or mars okay jupiter who's going pretty well in the sign of pisces is transiting in the in the nakshatra of uh, saturn okay so that is why uh, you need to keep these things in account uh, while you understand your chart for all the others okay it might just be a more of a touch and go kind of a transit okay in case you have any grahas in the sign of capricorn or in the sign of aquarius for a brief period that is when you're going to feel an impact of this transit okay uh, whether it's a positive impact or a negative impact uh, you know, depends on uh, the graha that is placed right uh, the kind of rulership it has uh, okay in your chart and uh, the kind of association or some that it has with saturn so it depends on a number of uh, factors here uh, but yes one thing is there that this time period saturn though it is moving slow but it is in a great dignity it is super strong right uh it's like a once in a you know lifetime moment for saturn uh that is there um, but then it will only start giving prominent results into the sign of aquarius after its transit uh, which is going to be 17th of january 2023 and after a few weeks from that uh, you can prominently uh, you know see results into the sign of uh, aquarius okay so here as per the nakshatra activation saturn is for that brief period activating the eighth cycle and also being in Dhanushtra pada 3 it is activating the first cycle now what does this mean eighth cycle is associated to the natural eighth house of the zodiac which is all about transformation it is about life and death it is about inheritance it is about hidden knowledge it is about secret it is about a cult it is about sudden ups and downs or a sudden change or a sudden transformation it is also about the other side of the ocean so there could be some erratic water related activities as well over the next two and a half months and it is going to foster a lot of travel across the seas uh you know overseas uh for a lot of people uh, and it's going to be very very positive okay um, and the first cycle first house is all about yourself your body so you see when yourself and transformation comes together so this is what the next two and a half months primarily are all about it is a transformational period for most people okay uh, it is a transformational time now in case um, you know you have uh, planets and good planets for yourself for your ascendant in the sign of capricorn this is going this period is going to deliver positive results okay because saturn is currently in transit in the nakshatra which is ruled by mangal or mars and mars gets exalted in the sign of capricorn so we can expect very prominent results with regards to capricorn sign with regards to the grahas that are placed in your natal chart in the sign of Capricorn, okay, at this point in time. Also, from a double transit perspective, double transit of Jupiter and Saturn. Now, as per uh, you know Sri K. N. Raoji in his uh, you know great writings, he has mentioned in his research as well, the double transit phenomena occurs on the sign where Saturn and Jupiter have a mutual aspect. Uh, and during this time of a brief stint in uh, Aquarius, both these most important grahas for us are mutually aspecting the sign of Scorpio. So this all the more is a you know very good indication of a very transformational time. Uh, so wherever Scorpio is placed, the sign of Scorpio is placed in your chart, whichever house it is in. That is going to be uh, very very active all throughout okay so for example if you're an aries ascendant scorpio goes into your eighth house okay uh, so that means uh, it is the time of uh, you know getting or gaining some inheritance it is uh, a transformational time you could see a sudden change sudden ups and downs okay besides that 
um, you will also have uh, very prominent results of the sign of Capricorn, um, which is your 10th house. Okay, so this is about um, career profession. Um, now, for Taurus ascendants, your Scorpio sign goes into the seventh house. So, this transit for a brief period can activate a yoga for marriage if other uh, conditions are fulfilled in your chart. Um, you may get into some sort of partnerships or new deeds or agreement. You might travel overseas as well. Okay. Uh, Capricorn becomes your ninth house that will support uh, Bhagya fortune support from father it can give you long distance travel for uh let's say the sign of gemini okay this is uh, going to activate uh and be very prominently activate the sixth house okay that is the house of service daily routines uh you know job and uh, competition so you know your ability to overcome competition uh, can be uh, you know quite prominent at this time and this also is activating your eighth house so, which means sudden change so there could be a sudden event at your workplace or there could be a sudden change in the job or a sudden opportunity uh, that you might uh, come across with which you're not expecting okay uh, and it may turn out to be very positive for uh, the cancer ascendants you know, here it is uh, going to be activating, uh, you know, firstly your fifth house, which is the sign of uh, Scorpio. Okay, so this may trigger um, things related to children, your future planning. Okay, if you are, you know, sort of, this would be a time for those who are married and sort of, uh, you know, looking for to have a child. It's a quite a promising time for your future planning, doing creative work or tasks. Okay, this is. Uh, Quite a quite a good time, and then it is also going to activate your seventh house, uh, right? Which uh, can trigger marriage, and of course you also need to look at the grahas that are placed in the seventh house and how it is, you know, playing out aloud, because Saturn is going pretty strong and it's going to go retrograde, and while it goes retrograde, it is going to deliver most prominent results of the sign of. Uh, you know of, of the previous house that is a sign of Capricorn where it is going to transit back so it can uh, very well trigger marriage relationship partnerships new business and opportunities for Leo ascendants um, you know interesting time because uh, this is going to have an impact on your fourth house and a very positive impact on your fourth house which uh, means uh, that if you uh, you know this is nothing uh, better than happiness and satisfaction in life. And this is what this uh, time period is going to bring in. Okay, a sense of security, a sense of satisfaction. But then it is on you how you ensure to make it, you know, long lasting. For the Leo ascendants, it is also going to activate your sixth house. So this can bring in new opportunities at work, uh, you know, help you surpass the competition, uh, keep you involved in daily routines. Those who are, you know, wishing or seeking to keep a, a pet, particularly a dog, this is a, a great time. If your nakshatra is supportive, if your janma nakshatra or your lagna nakshatra is supportive at the same time, it is, uh, you know, a really good time if you are uh, wanting to keep a, a dog. Okay, so that's for uh, the Leo ascendants. For Virgo ascendants, okay, so this is going to have an impact on your third house. So you might want to put in a little more extra efforts in anything that you do. And this is also a time that you need to leverage your communication, uh, you know, in your life, at your workplace, uh, with the people that you know. Uh, time to also strengthen your relationships with younger siblings in case you have and act as, uh, you know, their support. This transit is also going to uh, affect your fifth house. Um, so that means uh, a time for future planning, right? Uh, looking at the way forward, setting certain goals in life, and also uh, we're going to put in a lot of focus on your children, uh, those who are looking forward to taking up an additional course or you know something to do with education. This can be uh, very supportive as well, particularly if you uh, you know are looking forward to doing a sort of a short term travel for a short-term course this is going to be an extremely beneficial time for that for libra ascendants okay this is going to have an impact on your 
second house. Uh, that means it is going to put a lot of focus in what you say, what you eat, and the environment in your household, the relationship, the bond with your family. So this is a time to sit back, uh, you know, relax, um, eat together with your family, uh, you know, spend a lot of time with them and help each other strengthen uh, this relationship. This is also going to have an impact on your fourth house, uh, okay, which means uh, that if you are looking forward to buying a car or doing some uh, you know, sort of property related discussions or deals. Uh, this is uh, quite a fruitful and a positive time. And all in all, it is going to enhance uh, the satisfaction and what you, uh, you know, are looking forward to uh, for your future. This is also a time for you to strengthen your relationship with the mother and sort of, uh, you know, take care of certain things that are associated to the mother. So quite a, quite a good time for the Libra Ascendants as well. Um, for the Scorpio Ascendants, this is going to have an impact on yourself. So this is a time that you need to focus on your body related matters. Okay, so exercise, uh, eat well, um, you know, sort of take care of your, uh, you know, daily things. So uh, um, just in case, uh, you know, be a bit mindful of, uh, uh, you know, any kind of issues that are pertaining to your body. If you required, you know, go for a go for a routine health check, right, uh, just to ensure that everything's fine. Uh, but then it's going to put your conscious back into, you know, your overall body and how you carry yourself, um, you know, how, how, of course, you need to also be working on your inner thoughts, okay, um, because Scorpios generally love, uh, you know, deep thinking as well. Uh, this is um, also going to have an impact on your third house. That can trigger some short distance travel, uh, that will enhance communication, uh, you know, some sort of learning that you might want to undertake at this point in time or upskill yourself. So it's quite an excellent time uh, for doing that. For the Sagittarius Ascendants, so firstly, it is going to have an impact on your 12th house. So here's what you need to do. You need to be mindful of your expenditure, uh, you know, what you incur. Uh, it is time for you to consider, uh, you know, sort of saving, holding back to things and as much as you can. Uh, but this can also very well trigger some travel or some connection with people from the foreign land. If you are waiting for opportunities or you know related to your visa or the PR, this is the time which can trigger uh, a lot of uh, you know similar things uh, you know here. This is also going to have an impact on your second house. Uh, that means uh, it is likely to create more sources of income. Um, so with expenditure, you know, if you were to uh, spend or rather expense, okay, uh, this time is also going to uh, ensure that you have enough, enough income as well to be able to spend. So, uh, you know, all in all, uh, that's, that's a plus. Uh, you know, if we, we must not just look at the expenditure, but in order to uh, you know, have that expenditure, one must have income as well. Okay, so that's how it's going to impact the Sagittarius Ascendants. For uh, the Capricorn uh, Ascendants, this is going to have an impact on your 11th house. So it will uh, help you expand your network. It will, uh, you know, sort of this time period can give you some gains as well. Uh, if you're looking for you know, promotions and job or elevation and job, and then at the same time an increment, uh, this is the time when you can perhaps see over the next two, two and a half months, uh, you know, certain results pertaining to this matter, if the Dasha is supportive. Uh, it is also going to have an impact on your first house. Uh, so this will put your focus back into your own body, you know, how you, you carry yourself, uh, you know, so uh, great time to exercise, do some sort of yoga or Surya Namaskar in the morning, it will be extremely helpful uh, for the Capricorn Ascendants. For the Aquarius Ascendants, this is going to have an impact on your 10th house, okay, uh, and an impact on your 12th house. So it is uh, building a very good connection, uh, you know, if uh, those Aquarius Ascendants who are currently either residing in a foreign land or, um, you know, looking for opportunities abroad, so this is an extremely favorable time if your dasha is supportive that can um, 
make a very long lasting move because that's what the power of retrogression is all right uh, the, the karmic results that it can deliver uh, by its capacity uh, will be long lasting okay uh, so an excellent time in case you're you're looking for opportunities so be more active uh, you know at this point in time uh, so that's for the Aquarius ascendants for Pisces uh, ascendants this is going to have an impact on your ninth house of Pagya of fortune long distance travel that's what this time period can bring in uh, this is also a time for higher learning for your spiritual upliftment okay and um, building and connecting with your father and taking blessings of your father this is also uh, going to impact your 11th house so with bhagya there could be certain gains uh, there could be an expansion of your network with friends uh, so this is also an excellent time for you to travel for some important projects which can uh, you know ensure that you gain a lot from it uh, so yes uh, make the most of this time so this is just a brief for you know all the 12 ascendants and how this uh, little brief appearance or a guest appearance of saturn in the sign of aquarius is going to have an impact um, more than that i've given you very valid reasons of why uh, you know these two signs are going to be very very active when saturn is going to move back into the sign of capricorn okay um, that's when things are going to change because uh, that's when the mutual aspect is going to be on a different sign that is the sign of cancer but then uh, i'll make another video around that time on how it is going to impact uh, that sign and from a nakshatra point of view as well uh, what is going to be the activation cycle um, but this uh, you know sort of certainly uh, is an excellent time because saturn is in great dignity great strength uh, Jupiter is in great dignity, uh, you know, at the same time, both the Dharma and the Karma Karak uh, are in great strength. So if the Dasha is supportive, if the time period of, is supportive, you can be making the most of it. And that is how it is going to have an impact on you. So that's it um, you know, about uh, Saturn's uh, very brief appearance in the sign of Aquarius, right? Uh, once again, um, do not expect major changes uh, with regards to the sign of Aquarius through this transit. Uh, wait for next year, uh, you know, sometime January, February. So that's when it is going to get, uh, you know, things are going to get started and you really feel those results. Uh, but this is just a, you know, sort of a, a brief uh, appearance that, uh, you know, before uh, the major uh, change occurs. And, of course, and, and certainly we'll, uh, you know, I'll make uh, more videos on that too. Uh, so that's it for now uh, thank you very much uh, in case uh, you wish to reach out to get a personalized reading or a consultation check out my website here uh, the link below uh, and have a good day thank you very much